again, good evening. On behalf of the YWCA Rock County, we're so happy that you could join us tonight for this special event, recognizing women in our community and supporting the YWCA's Transitions for Women program, a program that we'll share more information about later. Tonight wouldn't be possible with all of our sponsors. You're gonna see all their names on our screen and we'd like to recognize them. So if we could show our appreciation with applause at the end, we would like to thank our Diamond Major sponsors, BMO Harris Bank, UAW, Lamar, and Jack's Custom Printing, our Ruby Table sponsors, SSM Health St. Mary's Hospital, Black Hawk Community Credit Union, Mercy Health, School District of Beloit, Five for Women Magazine, Chris Keffler, and Black Hawk Bank, our Sapphire Partner sponsors, Johnson Bank, Baker Tilly, Fido, Brennan Style, and Camilla Owen. The Friends of the YWCA, Shoemaker Wealth Management Group of Wells Fargo Advisors, First Community Bank, A Beautiful You, Casey's General Store, Summit Credit Union, and our in-kind sponsors, Megan O'Leary Photography, Barb's Flowers, Floral Expressions, Minuteman Press, Best Events Catering, JATV, and the Diamond Center. Thank you to all of our sponsors. JATV will be taping tonight's presentation and it will be shown on their channel later this month. Each of the women honored here tonight, as well as those who came before, have had a significant impact on our local businesses, schools, churches, nonprofit organizations, downtown development, and arts and culture. The YWCA Women of Distinction Award honors women who are role models for other women and have inspired other women and girls to achieve success who have demonstrated excellence, accomplishment, and creativity in their profession, community, or lives, who are dedicated to social justice, racial equality, and diversity through our community, have exhibited qualities of leadership, teamwork, integrity, and dedication, and are, are committed to improving the quality of life in our community. Will all past YWCA women of distinction who are here please stand? And if you haven't been here for the last couple of years and didn't receive your new Women of Distinction pin, please remain standing and we will have someone deliver one to you so that you can proudly wear that. The YWCA Corporate Award of Merit recognizes a company or organization that contributes their time, talent, and treasure to various community organizations, events, or projects and strives to empower women in the workforce. All of our past Corporate Award of Merit honorees are on the screen. Can we give them a, a round of applause as well? You may be asking, with so many talented women and worthy organizations in Rock County, how are Women of Distinction honorees chosen? Each of the Women of Distinction Award honorees are nominated by friends, family, or colleagues for their accomplishments. Every year, the community is invited to nominate women, young women, and businesses who they feel deserve to be recognized for their outstanding contributions. Nomination forms are turned into the YWCA, and each nomination is reviewed by a volunteer selection committee. The selection committee is comprised of community leaders and past Women of Distinction recipients. We greatly appreciate their time and dedication. This year, we received 27 amazing nominations, and they had to review all of those. So please join me in recognizing and thanking this year's selection committee. They include Sue Mullen, Cheryl Jackson, Jessica Loker, Martha Pearson, Rick West, Dietra Salas, and Jan Witt. Thank you all for your time. Again, and thank you for choosing our wonderful Women of Distinction recipients. At this time, I would like to ask our event co-chair and YWCA board member Carrie Reinecke to come to the stage to help with the awards. And while she's coming up, I would also like to introduce you to our guest MC, Sarah Clavis. 
I know in your program you saw Stephanie Klett listed, and she unfortunately is unable to join us tonight. However, in her place, we have Sarah Clavis, Deputy Secretary of the Wisconsin Department of Tourism. Sarah was appointed by Secretary Klett in 2014, and before that, she was a Marketing and Communications Director, an Industry Relations Director, Director of Wisconsin Welcome Center System, Director of the Wisconsin Film Office, and Wisconsin's first statewide brand manager. Sarah grew up in Iowa, graduated from the University of Northern Iowa with degrees in marketing and communications, and then moved to Wisconsin in 1980. She's made public service her life's calling, working for state government for 30 years, so she knows what makes Wisconsin tick. She, we are thrilled to have her join us tonight, so please join me in welcoming Sarah. Yes, I'll have to lift that one up because I'm a tall gal. Hi, everyone. As you can see, I am not the lovely and talented Stephanie Klett. I am not a former Miss Wisconsin, although I had a dog named Missy, if that counts. Uh, I am not the former co-host for 20 years of Discover Wisconsin, although I loved and still do love to watch Discover Wisconsin. I hope that counts. But I am your Deputy Secretary, and I could not be more proud and grateful that I have the opportunity to uh, step in for the good Secretary. So as I look out on this audience, how wonderful it is to see this, this overwhelming audience of great dames out there. Wow! Now there are some really nice looking fellas too, but I do have to say that uh, um, a powerhouse audience of great women uh, makes me really happy to be part of your event tonight. So uh, one of the things I was asked to do is to uh, talk a little bit about um, how I have um, looked at mentoring or being part of um, um, mentoring over the course of my my long career and 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 so I wanted to just give you um, a couple of, of thoughts and then we'll move into um, what you're all really here for so in my life and career I've had um, numerous mentors um, many of them accidental um, some who knew they were my mentor and others who had no idea and I think that's what's, what, what the beautiful part of uh, life is, to keep your eyes and your heart wide open to opportunities that are really um, out there. So most people think that um, the mentee in a uh, mentor-mentee relationship is the one who gets so much out of it. And, and truly, if it's working, that is the case. But I have to say, as uh, a mentor, I'm the one who has really been uh, given the gift of being able to uh, work with um, women of all ages in all walks of life and to take the very, very most special part of, of all those uh, great people and, and see how it works in, into what I'm doing. And I, and I have to say that, um, you know, that gift of um, being able to share uh, yourself with others is, is a gift that just continues to keep on giving. And one of those things that um, in my role as the deputy, and as you heard, I've had almost every job at the Department of Tourism. Either they couldn't get rid of me or I'm like a bad penny that just keeps turning up. Um, but it has been um, uh, a fabulous opportunity now as we see um, many young uh, people coming into our organization to actually put that to, to work and to um, show uh, young women um, what it means to, first of all, work in state government because I believe it's a higher calling to serve all of you uh, and at the Department of Tourism, um, that's, that's what we're all about. It's, it's great customer service. It's uh, having a wonderful tourism product for people to enjoy when they come on vacation. And, and all of us 
uh, whether you're directly involved in the tourism industry or not, have a role in that. And I thank you for that, um, that work that you do, um, all of us do for this great state. And you know what's interesting is that no matter where you are on your career spectrum, whether you're just starting or a C CEO or someone like me who's had a long, long, very fruitful career, you can still be mentored. In fact, I am constantly being mentored by Secretary Klatt. Uh, whether, uh, whether she knows it or not, um, I'll tell you, when she says jump, you better be jumping. That gal knows what she's doing. And uh, we all have such a privilege of working with her, but that's exactly what this is all about. So, you know, between her and her mom, um, I, I've really been mentored by those two, two women. But, you know what, I see the, the, the single mom who brings her kids to church every Sunday. And they're, they're a little misbehaved, but she, she handles them with grace. Every time I see that, I get something out of it because that's patience, something that all women really need. I have, I have learned when I've uh, seen uh, women who've had to uh, bury children, the hope that they have that, that maybe tomorrow will be better. That, that is something that, that we can get um, from other women who've, who've been there and who know what it's like to have to lift yourself up by your bootstraps. Or being able to see someone who's succeeded and they're, they're just at the pinnacle of their career and they, they've gotten accolades and awards but yet they're so humble that you would never ever know that that's something you know, that's really important or exciting for them because you know what, that humility uh, is, is, is a piece of what we can all take from others who've uh, been successful. And so it really is true that you can teach an old dog new tricks. And um, whether you're a puppy or an old dog, all of us can learn something from the people uh, we are around. And, and that's what's so beautiful when you think about uh, what we have before us tonight. And as I was preparing for uh, this evening and, and reading the information about all of your uh, award winners and these wonderful women of distinction. Uh, it was absolutely heart, I, I mean my heart was bursting with pride because um, I'm one of you and we are all in this together and, and it's, a, it's truly a, a great honor to be able to, to talk uh, and to introduce and, and to be able to um, present these awards tonight. So I'm going to get started and I am going to uh, first talk to you about um, a lovely lady by the name of Annie Rundy. And before I get started, I wanted to mention to Annie that um, as she thinks about her career, I wanted to mention that there are two incredible woman, women in this state who are firsts, and they're also in agriculture. And you'll hear in a moment why that's going to be important for Annie. Annie is currently a, a senior at Janesville Craig High School. Yay, right here. Yay, Craig. She's an active member in many clubs and organizations. And here's the list. National Honor Society. National Science Honor Society. National Spanish Honor, Honor Society, and FFA. She currently serves as the FFA president. She's also a member of the Rock County Furry Fury not furry, fury, <laughs> girls hockey team, and what a great name. What a great name for a girls hockey team. Um, through her experiences with FFA, she's organized many, many projects. For example, this past spring, she planted pink pumpkin seeds. They grew, and she harvested them, and then she sold them at the local, local farmer's market. But that wasn't enough. She needed to do more. And this is where you really get to the heart and soul of a good woman. She took all those profits and donated them to the Pink Pumpkin Patch Foundation, which fundraises for breast cancer research. 
When she isn't playing hockey, Annie enjoys spending time on a family friend's farm, where she has a small herd of dairy cattle. She enjoys working with these animals and getting them ready to show at county fairs and at the Wisconsin State Fair. Next year, Annie's going to the UW-Madison. Yay, Bucky! Yeah, that's what we need is somebody else hollering for uh, Wisconsin. Who is right? Um, with all of her passion um, for animals and science, it's, uh, it's not surprising that she's going to seek a degree in dairy science. And then after she has her undergraduate done, she is going to uh, look to uh, go into um, large animal veterinarian services. So um, she has um, quite a plan. And so why I thought it was important to mention two um, really incredible women in ag um, is that I can see uh, this, uh, this, this gal, Annie, in, in a role like, like these women. First of all, former uh, state uh, senator um, who is um, now uh, part of DATCAP, um, Sheila Harsdorf is the secretary of the Department of Ag, Trade and Consumer Protection, a first. And then also, um, State Fair has a woman CEO who's also got a background in ag, and that's another first. And I mention that because uh, women who are blazing trails and being first is really important, and I have a feeling that, um, that someday Annie's going to be just like that. So um, when, when her principal nominated her, Dr. Allison Bian said she expressed in her nomination form that Annie has not only helped pave the way for younger girls to follow in her footsteps, but she actively sought out other females and encouraged their achievement in school and activities. She went on to write that Annie has shown perseverance in the face of adversity when her dad, Brian, suddenly and unexpectedly passed away when Annie was nine years old. With the support of her mother, the guidance of her older brother, Annie did not retreat under this unfortunate circumstance, but rather Annie soared because she knew that she had uh, a pursuit ahead of her, and that was her own success. Please join me in giving a great big round of applause for Annie. There she is. First of all, I would just like to start off by saying thank you to my principal, Dr. Allison Beyond, for nominating me for this wonderful award. And also, I'd like to thank the YWCA for organizing such an amazing event and recognizing all these wonderful recipients. I would also like to take a moment to recognize all the wonderful um, individuals supporting me here tonight. And without these incredible people in my life, I would not truly know. It's okay. It's all right. I'm going to stay here with you so you can finish, okay? I'd also like to take a moment to recognize all the amazing individuals supporting me here tonight. Without these incredible people in my life, I would not truly know the meaning of hard work, dedication, and passion. Thank you all so much for always motivating me to do my best and being great mentors to me on a daily basis. Before I finish here tonight, I would like to tell you all a story. This past summer, like we talked about earlier, I was, I was working in a community um, service event for the Rock County Historical Society, and before the event started, I met up with one of my good fam family friends, Nancy Nineheist. Um, and she introduced me to one of her friends that was waiting for the shuttle to the event. Nancy continued to tell me how she was working on a community service project for the, or Nancy continued to tell her friend how I was working on a community service project for the Pink Pumpkin Patch Foundation. This is a foundation which makes money for breast cancer research by giving people seeds and selling pink pumpkins in, the, in my community. I went on to tell Nancy's friend how I've been raising these pumpkins in my own garden and that I, give, that I have given seeds to my friend's family and people in my FFA chapter. Once I was finished telling her about my project, she began to cry and gave me a ginormous hug. And I was a little confused at first, but she went on to explain that she was a breast cancer survivor. And she was just so happy to see young people like me raising money and awareness for such a great cause. 
The moral of this story is to show that no matter how big or small the project that you're participating in, is your participation, your participation alone has a much larger impact on people that you would never expect. So I hope that this story inspires you to participate in your own community service project, no matter what size or scale, because you never know whose life you'll impact in the process. Thank you again for the wonderful opportunity to be recognized here tonight. So when, it, when I first walked in and I saw Annie, I said, what well, was that an adorable dress? Having no idea that I get to stay right next to the person wearing it. Thank you so much. And, and before you step away, I wanted to um, give you a quote. And what I tried to do in preparation for tonight is um, to look for quotes from uh, women who have um, substance. Uh, you know, whether that's um, someone famous or not. Um, but I found a quote from J.K. Rowling, and, um, you know, she's a very famous author who has done some amazing things with herself and, and her career. And she says, it takes a great deal of courage to stand up to your enemies, but even more to stand up to your friends. So there's Thank the you quote for much. tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, our future's in great hands. Isn't that awesome? So moving on to our... Um, all right. And you have your own cheering section. Wow. So we're going to move on to um, our uh, next woman, woman of distinction. And it's uh, Kristen Philhauer. Where's Kristen? Oh, somewhere over there. Okay. Kristen Philhauer is the UW Rock County Campus Administrator and Regional Associate Dean for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Throughout her career in higher education, Kristen says that she has gotten way more from her students than they've gotten from her. Now talk about unselfish. That's incredible. Kristen continues to be involved with community volunteer opportunities on the campus and within the UW system. She taught a college course called Education in a Pluralistic Society, which examines current theory and research on major issues confronting educators in this kind of a society. You know what, you are really smart, <laughs> very smart. You received the Kaplan Award not once, but twice, and, uh, and you've been recognized uh, for your outstanding contributions to students over and over and over again. Things like financial aid and creating a bridge program for underserved students, as well as the University of Wisconsin College Chancellor's Award. Now, couldn't you be a little bit more outgoing? <laughs> I mean, really. Kristen's family means everything to her. Her family includes her parents, Mike and Cheryl Nelson, uh, her husband, Scott, her daughter and stepdaughter, Abby and McKenna, her brother, Nate, sister-in-law, Amy, nephews, Michael and Connor, and her mother-in-law, Sylvia. How nice to mention your mother-in-law. <laughs> Charles Clark, who nominated Kristen, says that Kristen is always encouraging students and staff and helping them develop their leadership skills. She devotes countless hours outside of her busy day to help eliminate racism and empower women. She helps many young women quietly behind the scenes without saying a word. That's humility. Please give Kristen, a great big round of applause. And come on up to the stage wherever you are. There she is. Congratulations. You. You're Thank welcome. You. Those who know me well know it's a miracle I made it up here without falling. So. So. Um, thank you to my colleagues who nominated me. Uh, Charles Clark, Stacy Randall, and Sada Cook. It is quite special to be recognized by your coworkers, especially those for whom you have such respect and admiration. 
Oh, Annie, you're right. This is hard. <laughs> uh, thank you to the YWCA and for all the work they do for our community, including the endless ways they promote and empower women. You continue to lead the way, inspire our community, and move important conversations to the forefront. And we will be here supporting you in all that you do. Congratulations to all my fellow women of distinction honorees. One of the best parts of receiving this award is getting to know all of you and the work you do for so many. Keep on inspiring all of us to step up and share your gifts with others. <sighs> um, it is an incredible honor to be here tonight to receive this award, especially when it feels like you've already been given an honor to work in the field where I can serve others um, and, and a work that I love and am passionate about. As I thought about what I wanted to say tonight, I realized there is no way that any one of us is able to move through our lives or our careers without the support of others. So for me, tonight is all about thanking those who have surrounded me with their mentorship, guidance, and shared their own gifts with me so that I can serve others. I want to thank my colleagues from UW Rock County. This campus is a special place filled with incredible people who dedicate their lives day in and day out to assist students and promote education. I learned from and inspired by such hardworking, resilient, talented, smart, and fun people. I also look forward to the new opportunities for students and the community that will be created with our new friends and partners at UW-Whitewater. A special shout out to the student affairs team, Pat, Ashley, Karen, Janine, Stacy, Sada, Sarah, Tanya, Molly, Julie, Dave, and David, whose dedication, selfless service, and hard work push me to do better every day. Thank you to my UW College's colleagues, Melissa, Brittany, Cindy, Carla, Vicki, and Courtney. I have to say their names. Um, you are brilliant and strong women, always looking for new and innovative ways to do right by our students. And I can't imagine my work life without your friendship, humor, and guidance. Thank you to the students at UW Rock County for being my compass and teaching me more than I could ever teach you. You inspire me in ways that you can only imagine, and I want to continue to know and honor your needs and give you the experience you deserve. Don't ever stop believing in all that you can achieve. To those who've mentored, counseled, and created opportunities for me, many times without knowing that you have changed my life. These individuals include my teachers, Rachel Dowd, Sally Cullen, and Bob Pedersen, my amazing tennis coach, Camilla Owen, uh, Leanne Furman, the Thomas family, former supervisors, Nancy Butel, Rich Barnhouse, <coughs> Diane Pillard, Carmen Wilson, and Charles Clark. To my friends, many of whom are here tonight, Amy, Leslie, Megan, Jenny, and Jill, I am so lucky to have you in my life. For over 30 years, your friendship has given me strength, laughter, inspiration, and a lifetime of memories. Last but not least, my family. What a unique opportunity is to be able to publicly thank the people who are your everything. To my late grandparents, Leanna Lucille Shear and Roy and Virginia Nelson, I was a lucky kid to have learned so many wonderful gifts from you and what I wouldn't give for you to be here tonight, I miss you every day. To my parents, Mike and Cheryl Nelson, how do you thank the people who have given you such an extraordinary life? Mom, you are strong, independent, funny, and compassionate, often putting others first. Ahead of your time, you are a woman of distinction to me. Dad, you have taught me the gift of empathy, kindness, and patience. Thank you for teaching me life lessons of gratitude, hard work, and perseverance. You have allowed me this opportunity by always letting me be me and supporting me every step of the way. To my brother Nate, you are not just a brother but my friend. You have always had my back and been my biggest advocate. You have a gift in caring for others and making people laugh, which I am in awe of. It is an honor to be your sister. To my sister-in-law, Amy, thank you for being a partner to my brother and joining our family. 
And to my wonderful nephews, Michael and Connor, follow your dreams and remember that nothing worth doing is ever easy. I adore you all and I'm so glad you could be here tonight. To my in-laws, Sylvia and my late father-in-law, John Philhauer, as well as my stepdaughter, McKenna, your support, love, and kindness has never gone unappreciated. Your devotion to community service and helping others is inspirational. Thank you for sharing your gifts with our family and for coming to our rescue many times over the years. My husband, Scott, my rock, you have been at my side, encourage me in your quiet and steadfast way since I met you. You are respectful, loyal, kind, empathetic and strong, and your heart is so big. You believe in me and let me be me, and there is no better gift than that. I don't know how I got so lucky, but I'm so grateful, and I love you. My daughter, Abby, I want you to know what an inspiration you've been to me. You have grown into a smart, empathetic, and strong woman, and my wish for you is that you will take chances, continue to walk through the door of opportunity, serve others, and live life and don't forget to chase your passion. Being your mom is the greatest honor and joy of my life. Finally, I just wanna say a word about gratitude. I've been working very hard to keep this at the forefront of my life. A moment like this allows you to take stock of everything life has offered. I am in awe of the work of so many in this room tonight. Each of you have a gift, and at some point in your life, you have shared that gift with others. And we here, all of us, are a better community because of it. I hope to continue to work alongside you to serve others in ways that move us forward and help people achieve their goals. Those who know me well know that I am a huge U2 fan. And I would like to leave you tonight with the lyrics from their song, One. We all have one life and we get to do what we should one life with each other, sisters and brothers. We are one life, but we're not the same, and we get to carry each other. In essence, we have this one life that we share with others. We are not the same, but we have the honor of carrying each other through it all. Thank you to all of you who have carried me to this place here tonight, and know that I will continue to work alongside you to find ways to serve others, and move our community forward by helping people achieve their educational goals. Very nice. So um, I would like to um, tell you something from former First Lady Rosalind Car Carter. You have to have confidence in your ability and then be tough enough to follow through. It sounds like you're tough enough to follow through. Thank, Thank you. you Her husband sounds wonderful. There's another guy in this audience that I wanted to um, mention. Uh, he is my colleague. His name is Drew Nussbaum. He's here, and I uh, wanted to introduce you to him. Uh, in a sea of uh, lots of women, there's a few wonderful men. And what I like about Drew has nothing to do with our professional life together, because he does a lot of really, really good things for the Department of Tourism. But what I really love about Drew is the way he treats his wife and the way he treats his daughter. And that is a true man. Cheers. All right, next on our list, the next woman of distinction. Kendra Schiffman is a teaching fellow in the sociology department at Beloit College, the secretary's alma mater. Oh, I know she wishes she were here to say those words. She teaches classes in political sociology, social policy, education policy, with an emphasis on social inequality to help students deeply examine institutional and social structures that can both reinforce and mediate inequality and bring about greater empathy through collective action. Sounds like another really, really smart woman. She's also committed to connecting students to collaborative learning opportunities in the broader Beloit community, especially the school district of Beloit. Kendra has conducted research in collaboration with the Stateline Community Foundation, 
and two Beloit College students on domestic violence, sexual violence, and sex trafficking in Beloit and Rock County. All of this in order to support social services and advocacy efforts for those who have been traumatized by violence uh, in their lives. From 2015 to 16, she was given the opportunity, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Drew even has water here for me. <coughs> she was given the opportunity to uh, participate in Beloit College President's Inclusive Living and Learning Task Force. Based on her commitment to creating equitable learning opportunities in schools, she has joined the efforts and initiated many of them and served as an incredible co-chair of the Beloit School Board Ad Hoc Committee on Academic Achievement, a member of the NAACP Education Committee, and a member of the School District of Beloit Equality Committee. At home, she has two amazing, creative, and curious children who always ask thoughtful and challenging questions about the world, and they inspire her to be an advocate for them and for all students. In her nomination letter, Dorothy Harrell said of Kendra, through her work, her research, and her willingness to be part of her college community and the community at large, Kendra demonstrated that women can have it all with balance. Please welcome Kendra to the stage with a roaring round of applause. Oh, first of all, I want to thank um, Dor Dorothy Harrell for um, nominating me, um, especially, which comes as a huge, um, deeply meaningful compliment because of how much I respect and look up to her. And I also want to thank the YWCA and their selection committee and the YWCA for putting on such a beautiful event. Um, it means it's very, it's beautiful and meaningful and very humbling to me. Um, and it's humbling to be recognized in this way, especially because I never do advocacy work alone. It simply would not be possible without the support and participation of many outstanding individuals around me, both at Beloit College, in the school district of Beloit, and in the Beloit City community. And I feel that there are so many who do so much to improve the lives of women every day that also deserve to be recognized. I met many of those individuals through research I did over the summer and fall about domestic violence, sexual violence, and sex trafficking in Beloit, which disproportionately affects women and girls. And this was not possible without the contributions of so many others, many who are here. In this work, I met the wonderful people who lead local service, service social service and advocacy or organizations in Beloit and Janesville, one of them being the YWCA. And these um, individuals and organizations provide support for survivors of these very traumatic forms of abuse and I deeply admire and appreciate the compassionate and dedicated service all of these individuals and organizations give our community every day that often goes unrecognized. I'm also grateful for their generous contributions to the research that helps our community understand these issues in ways that will hopefully motivate more action. There are so many individuals that support and inspire me to continue to advocate for social and racial justice. And there are so many students who have taught me through their examples. A couple who are here tonight. It's my last semester at Beloit College, so it's, um, they've helped me grow in ways that I wouldn't have without them in my life, so I have a great deal of love and admiration for them. They, and so many around me, are doing brave and difficult work every day to improve students' lives or better our community. 
There's three other people in particular that have had a meaningful impact on me personally that I want to publicly thank, and two are here tonight, and one I've already mentioned. My dear friend Amy Sarno has shown me how to be an advocate for women and others in our community in her professional work and how she lives her life. She's an example of fighting for what she believes the world should be and genuinely supports and cares about those she advocates for. She's also been the most constant support to me since I came to Beloit. Carla Davis has been an important professional and personal mentor to me in my time at Beloit College, and she has always valued and generously supported the work I do. She has inspired me and has shaped my thinking, practice, and commitment to social and racial justice in significant ways. The community leadership of Dorothy Harrell, who is the president of the NAACP Beloit chapter, has also inspired me to take action to bring about positive change. She does not shy away from the challenges our community faces and is persistent in her dedication and commitment to doing the work that is necessary to improve the city of Beloit. I'm so grateful that she has given me opportunities to work with her and learn from her. I'm so grateful to all of these women, as well as my beautiful children, my wonderful family and friends, students, colleagues, and mentors, who inspire, inspire, support, and teach me every day. And I only hope I can live up to their examples of working against racial injustice and advocating for women in our community. Thank you very much. Yes, it's only fitting, it's only fitting that uh, the uh, quote that I have for you tonight um, comes from uh, Dr. Maya Angelou. Dr. Angelou says, each time a woman stands up for herself, she stands up for all women. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Cecilia Ramirez was born in Mexico and has been in the United States for 23 years. Cecilia is the coordinator of Latino Service Providers Coalition. She is also the president of LULAC, L-U-L-A-C Council 338. She is a member of SOS Latina and additionally, she is a member of the School District of Beloit Equality Committee and Safe Schools. The Student Healthy Initiative, the Beloit Crime Stoppers, and the Youth to Youth for Change. Cecilia was nominated, or excuse me, she was rather, she was named as one of Wisconsin's 29 most powerful Latinos in Madison in the May of 2017. The year before, she was given the Citizen Award by the Police Department in Beloit. And the year before that, in May of 2015, she was named Volunteer of the Year by the Beloit Daily News. Cecilia understands the struggle of raising a family in the United States without knowing the language, the rules, the customs of your new community. But yet she continued to learn every day and now enjoys sharing her knowledge with others. She has a passion for volunteering and giving voice to those who may not have their own or be able to express themselves. She and her husband have three children, Cecilia, Jose, and Imana. And I hope I pronounced them right because they are such beautiful names. Cindy Labe, her nominator, says that because Cecilia is bilingual and can understand the plights of many Latino families who came to the community, she is a strong role model and a fierce advocate. Now, wouldn't it be in, in your wildest dreams to be called a fierce advocate for something you believe so strongly in? That's a beautiful thing. She's passionate about making sure the Latinos in Beloit understand that they are an important piece of the Beloit community. Please give Cecilia a great big round of applause and come on up to the stage. Oh gosh. Good evening. 
It is a pleasure to be here tonight, especially receiving this recognition. I want to thank you with all my heart, especially my friends who took the time to nominate me and for believing in me. The YWCA for choosing me. I also want to thank my friends and my family for being here. I want to mention that when I work, I do not look it. I do not do it for uh, looking for a recognition. I just do it with the hope that the problem will be solved. And when I manage to solve or help someone, their happiness of achievement are my happiness too. I want to teach, I'm sorry, I want to thank every person that is here that has been and somehow helping me um, to help my clients. Uh, many of you, I'm gonna stop reading because I'm, I'm losing my, in my lines. <laughs> So I want to thank you for helping me and for um, doing um, the job to help others. And especially when we working with um, the women, with the children, with that ladies in need, um, for understanding and for helping um, to have this trust. When you're in the need, um, it's very hard to trust and especially for us the Latinos I will say ladies like me English as a second language um, it's very difficult uh, to come and ask for help so I have been very fortunate to have um, not only ladies but many people to trust me and I think that is really important so thank you for understanding and for making our life better. Um, I have been very fortunate in the community and I have angels with arms and legs instead of, instead of wings um, and they know who they are. If I mention it, they, they, I mean the ones that are here they know they are my angels. They're always helping me and they're always understanding me and um, I, I, I wanted to really mention Cindy Lobby, who nominated me. I want to thank you for believing in me and for, for adopting my family. Um, she has always helped, helped not only me, thousands of ladies that come to her program at the Even Star. Is part of, the Evening Star is a program uh, as part of the school district of Beloit, and she's the coordinator, and she's one of the ladies that have always hold my hand and help us around. So um, the job that I do, I do it because she's always behind me, and um, so I really want to thank Cindy. Um, my children have been always my, my greatest point of continuing uh, working and trying to be better. Um, being a, a, a good mom has been always my point of success. Um, I wanted to be able to help my kids to do homework and if you hear on the corner over there, a mama, mama, I have a 15 year, uh, 15 years, 15 months old baby, and um, my 21 year old boy is here too. Uh, my daughter, um, I have a daughter, 19 years old. She's in UW Medicine, and I don't know, should it, uh, if I should say, unfortunately or fortunately. She couldn't be here with me today because she has a test. <laughs> so, 
chance to go and, and present a test. So um, I think that is very important. Um, I don't know. I don't want to read this anymore. I just, <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much for everything, for nominating me, for being here, and for helping the community. Thank you so much. Sorry, I hope I can. No, that was that was beautiful, and uh, your daughter is just gorgeous. So um, I have a, another um, message from Dr. Angelo. Um, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can come out of it. it sounds like you. Thank you. And she's clapping. Judy Roberts was first involved with the YWCA Rock County when she began as a solicitor for the United Way of Rock County while already working for General Motors. So she didn't have much free time, it sounds like. Although she's lived in Stoughton for the past 30 years, she has always felt in her heart that Janesville is where she needs to focus her energy even more so after the recession and the subsequent closing of General Motors that threw a number of hardworking people a curveball. Judy is known for her strong leadership and fundraising skills, which have been exemplified in a number of initiatives. She's been involved in HealthNet, Project 16 verse 49, Gilda's Club, UAW Local 95, the Salvation Army, Great Lakes Horse Association, and the YWCA, where she has served on boards as well as numerous committees. Judy's family includes her wonderful husband, Larry, daughter, Jamie, son-in-law, David, and three stepchildren, along with her two dogs, Brody and Bandit. How nice that you mentioned your dogs. Dogs are part of the family, we know that. Um, Amy Carey nominated Judy, saying that when Judy and I met, I instantly looked up to her, and the energy and passion she puts into everything she's involved in taught me leadership skills, how to stand up for what I believe in, and to never, ever back away from a challenge. Judy, you deserve this next round of applause. Please come up proudly and accept our gratitude. I'm not really good at this, so. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you to everyone, and um, this room looks amazing. Thank you, Carrie. You did a wonderful job. Can't tell you how humbled I am to be receiving this award. I must have missed it. I never thought about doing any of my volunteer stuff. Um, I never thought about doing all my all my um, all my activities to be getting an award. It just did it because I thought I wanted to do it. I've heard the term raffle queen. <laughs> it's me. It's because something that we do. And I'm not just saying me, I'm saying that we have a team and it includes John Ludwig, Mark Tomaszewski, Susan Ludwig, and Susan Silla, I mean, I'm Su Susan Mullen, and myself, as well as many other people that we have recruited along the way. We do this for many other, many organizations many that are near and dear to us, and some that have just asked us to help them. I love to help, and I've been on numerous committees, and love helping making things better. While most of, us, most of you who know me know that while I am as, as outspoken as I am, 
I am not good at asking people for sponsorships or donations. So when you're not good at it, you have to ask, you have to work at it. You have to do the work for yourself. So thus, the fundraisers. And we, we do it well. I'm not saying that we don't. We're good. <laughs> That's it. That's right. Everybody knows. There are many fundraisers throughout the years that were done at GM UAW. Some of the people outside the plant have never heard about. We did fundraisers for the plant from the plant for the Veterans Committee, Boys and Girls Club, March of Dimes, Relay for Life, Rock County Cancer Coalition, Toy Drives, Food Pantries, Echoes, and the big annual GM Food Drive, and many others. The employees of GM were very generous to many organizations for Rock County. When the plant closed, I wanted to help with more in this community. Even though I've lived for 30 years in the Stoughton area, I've always wanted, wanted and felt like I needed to help more in Janesville. I have served terms in the ex executive board of the YWCA in Rock County and as recording secretary of UAW Local 95. I am still involved with several events such as UAW, I, I'm sorry, so I said YWCA, Fix the Flats, Chefs for a Cause, Care House Golf, and Walk a Mile. The YWCA has been my passion to be able to help others to get those resources that they need. I never realized that the needs were so high. It is truly astonishing that so many are being helped through the YWCA Domestic Violence Shelter, Care House, and, tra and Flats Traditional Living. Helping women and children get back into a normal, sorry, living environment to the apartments, counseling, and trainings. Mostly, I am so lucky to have been to have worked my whole life for places like General Motors, UAW, and Print Corporation, all have, that have been so generous to this community. My daughter has made comparisons to me and Rosie the Riveter as being a powerful woman as she was. I believe the main thing that is the same about Rosie and myself is that my first job at GM was riveting frames on the pickup truck line. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> we all have the mindset. I believe we have the power. You just have to make it happen. I never do things because of the accolades. I do it because it is the right thing to do. No matter what, it's all for a good cause. Again, I am so honored and humbled to be chosen as one of, the, of this year's YWCA Women of Distinction Award recipients. Thanks to all that, uh, that nominated me, have faith in me, and continue to support and guide me. Thanks again to the Women of Distinction Committee for the awesome job planning and decorating this event. You did a great job. Thank you all. I think she gets the um, fingernails of distinction. I've never seen fingernails quite that beautiful. They're gorgeous. <laughs> so I wanted to um, give you just a few words of wisdom from Hillary Clinton. Take criticism seriously, but not personally. If there's truth or merit in the, in the criticism, Try to learn from it. Otherwise, just let it roll right off. That's right. That's right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And moving right along, Sue McGinnis spent 18 years at Woodman's, followed by working at Hospice uh, and at Grace, where she impacted the lives of hospice patients, families, staff, volunteers, and the community. While there, Sue created the Faith in Action program, enhancing patient care by involving a patient's own faith and their community. She was then part of the startup of St. Mary's Janesville Hospital, where she developed the hospital's volunteer department and a successful gift shop. She retired in 2014, but certainly hasn't slowed down. 
It sounds like you're busier now than you ever were. Sue's commitment to work and the community is why she is truly a woman of distinction. She serves as an associate board member for Black Hawk Community Credit Union, a board, she serves on several boards, inclu including the Lake Mills Race Association. She's on the um, Bower City Garden Club. She's involved in the YWCA Board of Directors, Janesville Presents Board of Directors, the Community Foundation, JPAC, United Way, Lions Club, hospice, homeless shelters, Alzheimer's support, the list goes on and on. Truly a woman of distinction. Sue and her husband John are the proud parents of Ellen McGinnis Strepper. Her husband Scott. Streeper. Streeper? Yay, thank you for telling me. All right. So she is the uh, proud parent of Ellen McGinnis Streeper. <clears throat> husband Scott. Taylor McGinnis and Natalie McGinnis. They have one granddaughter, Janessa. Me. Where? Hi, Janessa. Hi. Why don't you stand up so we can honor you as a woman of distinction? Oh. Come on, stand up. There you are. Thank you. Mary Frederick nominated Sue, remarking that, remarking that Sue has had some dark hours of her own. And maybe because of that, she is one of the first to help when others need to be lifted up. Sue brings out not only the, the best in others, but she also brings out the potential that people don't even know they have. She's a strong woman, and she is not afraid to be strong. Her journey through life and her belief in herself have brought her where she is today. Please congratulate Sue with your applause. And Sue, come on up. Thank you. It is such an honor to be standing here and receiving this 2018 Woman of Distinction Award. I am humbled to be considered part of all of the women and the businesses that have gone before me and received this award. A very big thank you to the YWCA, to the selection committee especially, to the board of directors and all of their staff for this honor and this incredible night. You do a beautiful job and you do a beautiful job every year because you've done this for a very long time. My heartfelt congratulations to all of my fellow recipients. You are very worthy and you deserve this award and I'm happy to be here with you. I'm standing here tonight because of the hard work of a woman who has been a very long time friend who will be careful if she approaches you and asks you to be involved in something because you will be, um, is Mary Frederick. True, very true. You know her, you know it's true. Mary's letter of recommendation for me for this award, along with the letters from Lisa Brown, Millie Babcock, Laurel Cannon, and Deb Colsey are the reason I'm standing here. Those letters are very near and dear to me. They are very humbling, they are very heartwarming, and I will cherish them forever. So I thank them for that. I also personally believe that there are men of distinction. And the person who is the very first top one on my list is my husband, Johnny Mack. Johnny Mack has always had my back, always. Always been in my corner, and I firmly believe that I am the woman that I am because of the man that he is. It's true, I'm telling you, it's true. It took me a long time to find him, but I'm telling you, 35 years, I've been for great 35 years. Our children are here, our eldest daughter, Ellen, is here. Ellen has been with me forever. And for those of you who know me, that is true. She's been with me a very long time. And I am so grateful for her and love her and thank her for being on this journey with me. Her husband, Scott, is here. You've met my beautiful granddaughter, Janessa. Yeah, she's gone through many things and she still smiles every single day. 
Our youngest daughter um, is Natalie. She lives in Florida. She is joining us next week, and I couldn't get her to fly here for two weeks in a row, but I know she's with us in spirit, and she has always been my supporter. I have one son. His name is Taylor. You've seen him following me around tonight. He's been my official photographer. I didn't realize it, but it's worked out pretty darn well. Um, Taylor has taught me many things on how to be the mother of a son, and I look forward to learning much more from him, because I know I will. <laughs> Strong women, and many other women, have always been a part of my life. Starting with my mother, Martha, who raised four children all by herself in the early 50s. I had the most awesome mother-in-law come along, Nell McGinnis, and was blessed with her for many years. And my Aunt Daisy, who was my second mother. These women taught me not only how to be a good woman, but they told me how I was supposed to be a good human being. They called me on things from time to time, but I learned a lot. At times in my life, I've taken the most direct route that there is to get exactly what I've always wanted. Other times, not so much. Other times I took quite the scenic route, but here we are. Here we all are tonight. We've all done that. We have all experienced great joy in our lives. We have all experienced great sadness in our lives. But isn't that what makes us who we are? Isn't that all those experiences and that entire journey and all that we learned on how to be great human beings? And that's why we're here. That brings us here. We all believe in the mission of the YWCA and all of those great organizations that we all support that are in this community, because that's who we are. So look around you. I believe this entire room are all women and men of distinction. Whether you've stood on this stage or not, you are. It's because of what you do, it's because of the fact that you're here, it's because of the gifts that you have and that you keep paying it forward. And that's my ask, and that's my mission, and that's my message to you tonight, is to keep doing that. Keep being encouraging. Keep forgiving. Keep supporting. Keep inspiring. Keep being there for everyone else, because they need us, and because we do it. Don't only just do the handout, which we all do, and we all do it very well, but remember to do the hand up as well, because it's so important. Again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is very humbling. I love it. It is an awesome award, and I am so happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> so I, um, I have a message from um, Marie Curie. Okay. And, of course, um, we know her as uh, one of the most famous scientists this world mm -hmm. has ever seen. She says, life is not easy for us, but what of that? We must have perseverance and, above all, confidence in ourselves. We must believe we are gifted for something and that, that this thing must be attained. Very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being part of the Thank you very much. And now it's my privilege to announce the Corporate Award of Merit. This year, that award goes to Jack's Custom Printing. <laughs> Jack's Custom Printing is an outstanding leader in the community and everything about service in Janesville and Rock County. A staple in downtown Janesville for private and public printing, Jack's always looks at opportunities to provide in-kind donations and discounts because that's just what they do. That's how important Janesville is to them. Things like charities, schools, civic groups, fundraising groups by way of printing posters, flyers, mailing, other promotional and marketing materials. Jack's Custom Printing is a strong pillar of this community. Partners Rick and Dennis exemplify the spirit of the award through their own personal service, their leadership, and their dedication to their community. 
Dennis efficiently runs the business behind the scenes and encourages his staff to go above and beyond in providing excellent customer service. Now this allows Rick the opportunity to be the face of Jax. Rick is active in the community, spreading good cheer and helping those in need with support of Dennis and the whole team back at the office. Kim Lanta and Crystal Phillips said the following about this amazing company. We wanted to honor and recognize a business in the community that doesn't need to be in the spotlight. Rick is there often behind the scenes, helping with volunteer activities, but not needing a lot of notice, not a lot of out front time. Dennis is back at the office supporting and encouraging staff to make a real contribution and difference in this community. They go on to say, we want them and their business to be noticed and recognized. That's how good they are. Ellie Swart will present the award on behalf of the Board of Directors. Please help me congratulate Rick and Dennis of Jack's Custom Printing. I think I have a new hardest thing that I've ever done before in my life, and it's not swimming in ocean or climbing a mountain. It's going last after all these incredible women tonight. <laughs> But I've always loved this event. Ever since I've been back in town, I've, I've loved to come to this um, because it is just such a great event and the YWCA um, just does an outstanding job with this, um, selecting incredible women of distinction um, and making this just such a meaningful event for everybody. And, and the thing that I like the most about this is there just seems to be a quiet, positive power in the room that, that just makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Do you guys feel that? I it's, see it. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and I always leave this event um, just feeling so energized and, and so I want to thank um, the YWCA um, for, for having this event. Um, the first time that I knew about this event was back in 1988 um, I didn't even live here at that time, but uh, my mom, Sue Miller, who is here um, today, um, received uh, a YWCA Woman of Distinction Award, and, and I remember just being so proud of her then. Um, 20, thank you. Twenty-one years ago, I moved back to Janesville to take over Custom Zero Graphics the family printing business my mom had started 42 years ago. I remember sitting down with my mom to discuss um, the terms of, of uh, purchasing the business and I thought we were going to talk about the important, or we were going to talk about uh, how much money I was going to pay her, um, but instead we talked about the importance of community service. She said that there are many people in our community that need our help. Some that fear for their lives and the lives of their children. Some that need food on their tables and a roof over their heads. Some that need health care and medication. And some that need education and an opportunity to make their lives better. She said there are many incredible organizations that help, that help them and make our community better, that make our community better and stronger and it is our responsibility to help them. She said, they work, they're very hardworking people helping others, and sometimes printing is the last on their list of things to do. So, she said, sometimes they will bring things to you at the last minute, <laughs> and they, they don't know for sure what they need, but it has to be perfect and they still need it right away. <laughs> then she said, they will always need a very good price and sometimes will even need you to donate it to them. <laughs> so I know many of you are here tonight, but you don't have to put your hands up. 
But she said, you can't just help them with their printing. You'll need to help them by joining their boards and committees, help them raise money through their fundraisers, even help them provide service to their clients. She said, if you do all of these things, you'll become a part of their success. And I promise you, you will wake up every morning excited to go to work. And at the end of the day, you will feel a sense of accomplishment that few jobs can provide. So I started working hard at helping people, as many people as I could, and I think I did a pretty good job of it. But I'm sure that most of you can see that helping as many people as you can is not necessarily a very solid business plan. <laughs> and I started working many, many long hours, nights and weekends, and I was getting very tired. Then one day I had lunch with my good friend, Dennis Vindedal, um, and he suggested that we merge our two companies so that we could better serve our customers and our community. For me, it was a no-brainer. Dennis had the same business philosophy about offering great printing at a fair price and being a strong supporter of the community. And Dennis and I have different strengths and weaknesses, Dennis is very organized and efficient, um, but is not as comfortable as I am being out in the community. I love to be out in the community, making new friends and creating new relationships, but let's just say that I am organizationally challenged. <laughs> so Dennis and I became partners and called our new company Jack's Custom Printing. His main job is organizing our workflow and keeping us efficient and my job is to go out in the community to serve where I can, create awareness about the things that we do, and then come back to the shop and create chaos. <laughs> it's been a great merger for me. It, it turns out that I'm much better at my job of creating chaos than Dennis's at organizing it. <clears throat> but we're able to get a hundred times more work done together um, to help many more people and organizations that, that, we could not have, that we could not have individually. Dennis and I would like to thank our staff who many times do most of the work but usually never get to see the results of how their efforts have helped those in need. Tina is Dennis's niece, has worked for us for 22 years. She takes over for Dennis when my chaotic ability overwhelms Dennis. <laughs> she never complains when I throw in a few extra printing emergencies into her already tight schedule. Carolyn and Louise, who were hired and trained by my mom over 25 years ago, love helping people so much that they just can't retire. <laughs> Karen, who came out of retirement um, and worked for us a long time ago, but, but wanted to come back uh, just to help us get all of our work done. Um, Steve is Dennis's brother, who is always willing to come in when we are really, really busy and have lots of hard work to do. That's his specialty. And finally, uh, um, Haley, who um, is Tina's daughter, um, helps us out between her other two jobs and going to school. We want to thank our families and friends, especially our wives and children, who have accepted our causes as their own. Many times they never know the whole story, but trust us and believe it is important enough to give up their valuable time and effort. We want to thank Crystal Phillips and Kim Lanta for nominating us for this incredible award. It's even more meaningful because it came from both of you. We are very honored and humbled to be among so many great recipients. And Crystal, I'm going to miss you very much when you move to your island in, a, in about 10 days. And finally, we wanna thank all of you here today for all that you do and allowing us to be part of a caring community who want to help their friends and neighbors in need. A wise woman once told me, if we all help everyone become stronger, 
there will be more of us to help and less of us that need help, and maybe someday we can all be strong. Thanks, Mom. Thank you very much. I have one more um, quote to uh, deliver. Uh, this is from Gloria Steinem. She says, without leaps of imagination, we lose the excitement of possibilities. Dreaming, after all, is a form of planning. And I thought that was appropriate for Jack's printing. Thank you for the work you do. And Mom, you are a gem. <laughs> What a privilege it has been for me to be here tonight. Um, I love looking out in the audience and seeing uh, women fanning themselves. You know that it's been a good night when you have to fan yourself. It is. It's wonderful to have the, the, the span of age, the very youngest to the very oldest and everything in between. And as I uh, part tonight, I just want to uh, wish you all good cheer and great health. And I hope that um, you will have an opportunity this summer to travel Wisconsin. Thank you. Oh, and I'm supposed to introduce you. Well, I need to flip my uh, page, I guess. Oh, and now it's my pleasure to introduce Angela Moore, the Executive Director of the YWCA of Rock County. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> I'll take my book. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Didn't she do a phenomenal job for us tonight? Don't leave, Sarah, stay, and take your and accept your applause. Thank you so much. Sarah had one day notice to prepare for this because Stephanie became ill. So thank you again. We'd like for you to accept this small token of our appreciation for helping us tonight and for being such a fabulous MC. <clears throat> Carrie Reinecke and Ellie Swart, thank you for chairing our 2018 Women of Distinction event. And your committee was phenomenal. Congratulations again to all of these amazing women and to Jack's Printing for all of your great work in Rock County and helping to serve everyone and to make our world a better place. Let's give them all another well-deserved round of applause. So tonight, with your presence here, you are helping the YWCA Rock County to not only celebrate inspirational women and corporations in our community, but you're also helping women and children in our Transitions for Women Program and Economic Empowerment Center. At Transitions for Women, we inspire and empower women of all ages to realize their full economic potential in a community environment created for women. We offer individualized economic services to all women in our community, regardless of income. Our advocates help women overcome barriers to employment and housing. Sometimes fleeing domestic violence leaves a woman immediately homeless <clears throat> and in need of training and support to recover and to gain independence and self-sufficiency. The Transitions for Women program offers a path to domestic violence recovery through case management and support groups with the goal of obtaining permanent housing. The 11 apartments at our transitional housing program at the historic Jeffries Flats building are the only transitional housing units available for families affected by domestic violence that serves all of Rock County. Our Economic Empowerment Center offers unemployed or underemployed women in our community access to computers and the internet for job searches or educational opportunities. We all know 
that internet access is often the key to starting a new career. The Economic Advocate is on site to help women build a winning resume to develop interviewing skills and network with other women offering job search assistance and tips. In addition to an on-site advocate, many of our services are also accessible online. Our Economic Empowerment Center helped 71 women find jobs last year. <clears throat> Thank you. For women in poverty, finding a job is not the only hurdle. There are many barriers that make it almost impossible to keep their job. One barrier we found is transportation. We have made a commitment to lower this barrier. If a woman is employed and earns below the poverty level, she can come to the YWCA and receive one $20 gas card or bus tokens per month. She has to show her current pay stub, and we compare that to the poverty level, which is just $19,000 a year for a mother and two children. Nationally, women in poverty have a 42% chance of retaining their employment. And we know these gas cards work because we exceeded the national average with 65% retention for women keeping their jobs when we started tracking this. Thank you. We asked women what the transportation assistance meant to them and their families. Martha Pearson, who's our Transitions for Women Program Director, will share some of the stories with you. Martha? <clears throat> Thank you, Angela. I have women come in and we were asking them, what do, these, what do these gas cards mean to you? I had a nurse's aide who had three children and was going to school to become a nurse. She told me how hard it was for her to make ends meet each week and what a blessing the gas, gas card was to her budget. Another mother of four working at a restaurant and going to UROC told me that not having to fill her gas tank that week allowed her to spend her income on food for her family. A grandmother who was raising her 8-year-old and 11-year-old grandchildren told me she doesn't even know how she was going to get to work that day. No matter what was said about the gas cards, the last statement is always nearly the same. I really appreciate the transportation assistance. I really appreciate your kindness. And finally, another said in tears, thank you. For that week, that I don't have to worry about running out of gas. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Please help us help these women and their families lift themselves out of poverty. On your table is a flyer for a Give a Gal a Lift program. The name symbolizes the transportation lift and providing a hand up to improve her and her family's lives. By supporting our Give a Gal a Lift program, you are providing a gas-only card or bus token for one woman for one month. You can donate at our levels indicated on the tables, regular, level, unleaded, premium, and super premium. <laughs> our Give a Gal a Lift champions will come around with gas cans to collect your donations if you'd like. Please look for them with the gas attendance hats and be as generous as you can. If you prefer to use a card, you can swipe it at the registration table or you can mail them back to us in the envelope. And we thank you, thank you so much in advance for your support. Thank you. Now, I'd like to thank a few people, our YWCA Board of Directors, for their dedication to our mission. These women work tirelessly for us to achieve our mission here at YWCA Rock County, and they take their fiduciary responsibilities very seriously. Their names are listed in your program, but board members, will you stand for a round of recognition and our applause and thanks. I'd like to invite Ellie Swart to come back on stage for a special presentation.
Thank you. We do have an incredible group of board of directors here at the YWCA, but tonight I want to take just a moment to thank two special board members whose terms here are ending. Um, Elaine Schultz couldn't be with us here tonight, but she is our most recent board chair and has been an immense asset to the group, and we're going to miss her dearly. Um, secondly, Crystal Phillips is sadly not only leaving our board, but also leaving our community. Um, Crystal's going to be relocating to Florida in the next few weeks. Um, she has been a powerhouse of energy, helping to get our message out, help raise funds, and make such a huge difference. Um, Crystal, you're not going to leave just a void in the YWCA family, but really in this entire community. Thank you so much for the difference that you've made. Uh, we do have a small token of appreciation for both Elaine and Crystal, and I just wanted you all to help me give a big thank you to them for everything that they've done. Thank you, Crystal, for your service. What a wonderful night we had tonight. Great event. I'd like to thank our Women of Distinction Event Planning Committee, and they were responsible for planning every aspect of our fabulous dinner. Under the leadership of event co-chairs, Carrie Reinecke. Please stand, Carrie. And again, Ellie Swartz, they co-chaired this event. And um, the members are, will you please stand, Kim Lanta, Tamara Lyne, Amy Loshing, Kayla Murphy, Laura Watson, Crystal Phillips, Martha Pearson, and Katrina Carlson. Thank you all for your incredible help. You did an amazing job to make this a special night for all of us. For Carrie and Ellie, we have a small token of appreciation and our thanks to you. Carrie, if you'll stand and hold up your appreciation. You received it a few minutes early. And then Ellie, thank you so much for co-chairing this. 